Morning, Phil. How are we? I'm well, yeah, very good, thank you. Happy days. So, just to get started then, uh, can you give us a bit of background on, on yourself and then and your career before and with uh, SIS or SIS? Is it SIS or SIS? I'm never sure. Yeah, SIS or SIS, we're known, we're known as both. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I've been in the industry for about 22 years. Um, I started out as a, as a groundsman at uh, my local team, Ipswich Town Football Club. Um, I yep. worked at Portman Road as a stadium groundsman. I was there for about six years um, and before, before I came on board of SIS in 2004. So I've been with SIS for 16 and a half years now and I've been working initially hands-on um, installing synthetic artificial pitches all over the country in the UK um, and then that, that sort of broadened out to, to working more on again on natural pitches um, on the continent as well as in the UK um, and then on to construction of pitches whether that be natural or synthetic um, and then eventually from 2015 working on uh, on the hybrid side of things with, with Syscross and that's where uh, where I am today. Sure. And so you mentioned Portman Road and, and, and as, as a groundsman and that type of thing just tell us a bit what is some of the day-to-day -day roles as a groundsman there? So as I was a stadium groundsman there um, I was in charge of looking after that pitch on a day-to-day -day basis whether that just be normal maintenance or match preparation. Um, at the time when I was there, Ipswich were flying a little higher than what they are today. So I saw them get promoted to the Premier League in 2000, which was nice. So we had some decent, decent football matches going on. So it was good. And we also had some England internationals. So, yeah, it was very varied. Um, and yes, at the time, I very much enjoyed. Um, but yeah, the, the roles were anything from, you know, daily mowing of the pitch, marking it out, repairing it. Um, and the general duties really to do with that. And the, the, the links are obvious between what you do now and what you do in them. And so, I mean, that's obviously helped. But are there any any reasons why that might have hindered what you do now, what you were doing before? Um, no, I think the fact I've, I was a groundsman and a lot of the people I deal with on a day to day basis are a groundsman, whether that be in football, rugby, cricket, or tennis. You know, a lot, all the people, all, all turf people in the industry can relate to things if you've, if you've worked there. And I think that comes across and it helps me understand, you know, from the, from the customer's point of view, a little bit better maybe, um, some of the things I go through on a day-to-day -day basis because I've been there and I've done that, you know, um, previously. So no, I think that helps me. And, and how difficult was it to make a transition from what you were doing before to maybe something a bit more business-minded or, or, or slightly different? Um, initially, it was a yeah, it was a big change. I hadn't done anything other than be a groundsman until I joined SIS, and it was a big change going from working on an actual turf pitch every day to yeah, to coming into the world of synthetics and uh, and construction, which I'd never never done before. So so no, it was a bit it was a big change, um, but it was something I thrived on. Um, I I can't see myself. I couldn't have seen myself staying as a groundsman for much longer at Ipswich. I wanted to broaden my horizons, so so that's why I moved on and joined SIS and. I haven't really looked back, to be honest. I've been able to, uh, to get involved with, with all aspects of, yeah, synthetic, natural, and now hybrid, whether that be maintenance, construction, or, um, or anything else. You know, it's, it's been very varied and something I really enjoy. And so then just to, to get stuck into it more, SIS, SIS, pitches, what is it exactly and what is it that you do? So SIS Pitches is a, is a global, global business with several offices around the world. Um, we specialise in the in the design, um, the manufacture, construction, insulation, uh, and also maintenance of natural, synthetic, uh, and hybrid sports pitches. Um, so we we do that all over the world, um, and we can offer uh, an in-house service from start to finish if if the client requires that, and that's quite unique uh, for a company that's you know works all over the globe. Um, so that's that's SIS pitches. And then I now, I'm now focused on, on the CIS grass business side of it, on the side of it, which is the hybrid. Um, so I'm now a director with CIS grass, looking after that predominantly in the UK um, and helping out the, with the CIS grass internationally as well. So, so, so what is the CIS, the CIS grass exactly? Where did the idea come from and, and what is it? So CIS grass is, the, is our sort of flagship product, if you like. It's our stitched hybrid system. Um, it came about in 2015, well, it launched in 2015. Um, it was only the second product of its type on the market, um, following a competitor who's, who, who introduced the system many years ago. And it, uh, you know, a tremendous system works very well. 
which is why we wanted to see what we could do and how we could uh, improve things. And that's what we did in 2015. We, we introduced new, ma new machinery, new technology, uh, and new ways of int introducing this system into the market. And uh, it's worked very, very well. So what, what sets this grass apart from, say, the, the, if someone's going to come in and use this grass to replace their pitch, what sets it apart from what they've already got or what they could go and get in the market? I think it's just the, the innovation that we've brought. Um, as I said, when we, when we introduced, we, we, we introduced new technology um, to introduce this, this system into pitches, um, whether that be the accuracy of the stitching of the fibres or the speed of installation, and also the, the service we provide as well. Because, because we are a company that builds pitches and we know pitches, we, we, you know, we, we work with pitches on a day-to-day -day basis. We're not just offering a, a stitching service, if you like. We, you know, we, we do work with pitches on a day-to-day -day basis, and, and that knowledge comes with it, and I think that comes across with our, with our service, what we, um, what we bring. And so you mentioned the technology and the process. So what is that sort of in a nutshell? What, what happens when you go in? So basically, when a pitch is rebuilt or it needs to be stitched with Sysgrass, um, our, our machines will come along. Uh, we've got big machines and also our smaller universal machines. They all work in the same way. Um, but what they're doing is introducing synthetic fibres vertically into the ground at very close centres. So every two centimetres over a, over a surface area, um, a synthetic fibre will be injected into the ground, either to a depth of 180 mil or to a depth of 90 mil, depending on the surface and the product. And, and that, that, product, that process over, the, over a normal football pitch of 8,000 square metres can be done in, in six, seven, six, seven days. Um, so it's a, it's a very, very quick process in terms of what, what, what was expected many years ago. So things have moved on. So that's, that's generally the process. And what you end up with, what Cisgrass is, it's a natural turf surface, which is synthetically reinforced. Um, but that synthetic element is less than 5%. So you're actually left with a, a grass surface, which is yeah, more than 95% natural turf. And, and you know, you, I've seen sort of been looking into it and obviously it, it's about in some of the big names in sports and some of the big venues, but is, is that something, is this grass available exclusively in elite sports or, or, or is it tangible for, for the likes of schools, universities, even amateur clubs? So, so in the early days of these systems, yes, it was it was the elite clubs, the big stadiums that had access to this. You know, it's uh, it's not a, it's not a small investment. And it, you know, and it does, and it has been, as I say, yeah, mostly available for big clubs and, and stadiums. But what we did in 2015, we introduced new technology, and then in 2017, we introduced another new technology, which was our Cisgrass Universal Machine, which is a smaller compact machine, which is the first of its kind, first of its type. And what that did is open up many more opportunities for other sports to actually get benefits from hybrid surfaces um, and that's what we've done we we ventured into into golf tees um, tennis courts and the biggest success so far is, has been cricket um, where we've been stitching cricket wickets now for for yeah three and a half years and it's going from strength to strength um, and that that is an avenue where we see real real potential growth so just before we we, we dive into cricket slightly more uh where are some of some of the venues or the names uh, around the world that that it, this is SIS is being used? So, so Cisgrass, the biggest, some of the biggest names would be Barcelona, Camp Nou Stadium. We've stitched that for the last two years. Um, we've also done uh, Celtic up in Scotland. Yeah. Um, Derby County was the first stadium pitch in the, in the UK, and since then we've done Fulham, Swansea, Birmingham City, um, to, to name a few. Um, Newcastle will be another one. Uh, Southampton and Brighton also in the Premier League. And uh, okay, so let's move on to to cricket then. Uh, what I haven't been a groundsman yourself. But what 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 are the benefits for somebody who's looking after a cricket square or a cricket pitch uh, to putting the SIS grass in there? So so the benefits of the groundsman is the, the fact that these pitches they're so much more durable. The actual the damage that is inflicted to the surface is, is significantly reduced. So the pitches will last a lot, lot longer and the damage they will suffer is a lot, lot less. So the actual amount of work for the groundsman post-use is, is significantly reduced um, and the recovery time of that surface is actually increased. So it's sort of twofold really. So it's, uh, that's the benefit from, for the groundsman's point of view. And, and tell us a bit about the, the relationship that SIS have built or have got with, with some top level cricket clubs in the UK. 
Yeah, so in 2017 was when we first sort of trialled Cisgrass in cricket. Uh, we worked with the ECB at uh, the ECB Performance Centre at Loughborough. And we also worked with um, Warwickshire Cricket Club at Edgebaston and also at Worcestershire. Um, they were the first clubs that trialled it. And after great success at all of those venues, we started getting more and more um, demand from the rest of the, the county grounds. And I'm pleased to say we've worked at uh, 14 of the 18 now. And they've, you know, they've got at least one or two pitches, whether that be practice pitches or, or actual match pitches as well on the main square. So, so the relationship of all those clubs is is good and it's growing um, and I expect to be working with them a lot, a lot of them going forwards too. And just lastly then, uh, it's the, the, the square can be used but also is it right that they can be used in, in the nets or, or on, on, on the pitch as well? Yeah, both. So the, the biggest, the biggest um, benefit of these pitches is the durability and the fact that they can take a lot more hammer than a, a normal natural pitch. So yeah, the natural the natural place for these is in net net you know practice blocks where okay. they get absolutely hammered. Um, but they have also been approved for for use in one day domestic games um, such as a T20 blast um, in in the UK. So the ECB approved those those pitches for use in 2019, and several matches in in that season and the season just gone have been have been utilising our, our hybrid pitches. And then so in terms of SIS as a company. Uh, obviously, everyone's been touched by what's been going on this year with the coronavirus. Um, what's the biggest challenge you faced as a result of, of, of the pandemic? I think it was it was the initially it was the uncertainty, and then it was the the yeah the cancellation, postponement, or a lot of the a lot of the orders that we had in place for the summer. Um, it couldn't really have come at a worse time. We were heading into our our busiest season um, from sort of from May to May to September, and we were faced with sudden. Yeah, a drop of orders. Um, people, understandably, not sure what was happening. Those orders being cancelled, and suddenly the order book was looking very, very slim. So that was the that was probably the the biggest challenge. And yeah, um, and to keep the work that we could, um, and to get through the year. And you know, fortunate enough, we did have a lot of clients who who kept a lot of the work at the back end of the year, which we were able to still work on and deliver. So we were. Yeah, thankfully, in a very good position compared to to some other companies who have struggled. And and the, so you mentioned before twenty fifteen, there was there was one other company that were doing exactly sort of the same thing that you were. Um, how competitive maybe since since you've started, have you found the market that that you operate in? Yeah, it is it is competitive. Yeah, um, initially for ourselves, it was it was difficult. A new company coming into a market where one company had had the the market share for for many many years. So getting getting our product in the ground and for people to recognise that was you know that had its had its own challenges. But since we've been on the market, there has there, there are now others on the market. There are now four four players in total. So it's getting more and more competitive. And along with the stitch products, there is also hybrid carpets as well, which are also in the marketplace. Um, so so no, it is a very competitive market. But there's a there's a lot of demand out there for these pitches, um, and we're certainly making our uh, making our name for ourselves in in that industry. And then, so that your obviously your journey was slightly different in the way that you worked your way up. But from your experience now in your position, what advice would you offer somebody who's got an idea such as the the SIS grass that they want to introduce into the sports sports technology market? Um, find a good idea that no one else has got <laughs> <laughs> that everybody wants. That's uh... <laughs> as simple as that. Simple as that, yeah. And no, we were we were very lucky that uh, you know we we came Cisgrass came along at a time where we were only the second company offering that kind of system, and we were able to sort of take advantage of that. Um, yeah. But it, it's a very niche market still, and you know although there is four players offering the service, it is still yeah it is still very niche, and it's a simple idea, um, but it's it works extremely extremely well, um, which is why it's a product which is in demand in the top football pitches and rugby pitches, et cetera, all over the world now. So, so now get a good idea and take advantage of it. And for you personally, is there anything you would do differently in, in your journey from, from groundsman up at, at Ipswich to, to where you are now? Um, I would probably have brought our small universal machine out earlier because knowing what we know now on what potential it has for, for cricket and, and tennis and, and hopefully golf as well, um, yeah, we wish we probably would have done that a little bit earlier. And finally, then, uh, 
what's the future hold for for you and for for SIS Graphs? Are there any sports, for example, you'd love to get more involved with, or or, or any markets that you'd like to to access? Um, one of the markets we we feel there is a real benefit to is golf and golf tees. Um, we have done a few trials with Cisco Grass on them, um, but we feel there is a lot more to offer. Um, we just need that's a definitely something I'd like to do a lot more in, um, and then also expanding in in the tennis. I, I believe on the basis of the success from the cricket that we've had, um, Cisco seems to be a really, really good fit for tennis, to, uh, natural to, to tennis courts, baselines in particular. So um, that's the, those are two areas where I'd like to see a lot more growth. Well, best of luck, Phil, uh, going forward. And thanks for coming on to having a chat this morning. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Cheers, mate.